a lot of people when they when they hear the idea of UBI, they they immediately wonder of if inflation is going to be a problem because you're just giving people free money and isn't yeah. isn't that going to cause inflation? So uh, yeah. I guess the yeah, the first thing is that uh um the money's going to come from somewhere basically, right? It's got a it's got a um I'm not sure what his exact plan is for, um, but I, I mean, he's going to have to, theoretically at least, he's going to have to tax it from somewhere or cut spending elsewhere. So I don't know, number one, like, does he affect, does this affect Social Security at all or anything like that? Or like, does, um, you know I, think, I, mean? like, I think his, uh, this, where he's going to source this money is from a, a VAT, a value added tax. Okay. Which okay. I also don't know anything about that. Yeah. So if you have any ideas about that, that'd be great. Uh, he yeah. says that, Europe has European countries generally have a value added tax and that the United States does not. Yeah. And that we should have it and that that's where the money for UBI will come from. Okay. So that's just basically the sales tax. Like, so it's just, uh, um, so, and it's, it's, uh, the difference is really is that, uh, it's added at each stage of production so that, uh, um, so that like manufactured goods and things like that, um, you only pay the the um, sales tax on the final price instead of all everything in between the chain of production. Um, so, anyways, the yeah the, the main thing is that uh, um, because the money's coming from somewhere else, uh, they're taking purchasing power away from other people to give it to the other people, kind of thing, right? So, like the money okay. is being transferred from one person to another, and it's distributed because I mean the fat. I'm pretty sure he would probably only have it at like. I don't know, like 5%, 7%, 10% or something. So um, uh, it's not like, you know, so some people will see a reduction in their uh, um, purchasing power and then other people see the increase. So there's not really that same kind of pressure on um, prices because there's not that kind of, uh, it's not like the money just kind of automatically just kind of instantly appears in the economy. It comes from right. somewhere else. So it's kind of like, yeah, I think that's, I think that's one thing. Um, uh, and, uh, it is true that maybe there might be changes. Like people kind of worry about like, uh, landlords and stuff. Um, the, the one, one thing that's actually probably the most true around this is that, um, uh, so in, in like kind of mainstream economic theory, wages are set by, uh, kind of like what the company sees your contribution to productivity and not really much else. Like we kind of think of wages as being like, well, that's a poor area, so people don't get paid as much, or you know, we think of that kind of stuff. But for mainstream kind of economics, is more it's more about um, what you kind of contribute to the final product. And um, obviously, that's kind of like it doesn't make sense in a lot of areas where like police or something like that. Police are not, you know, you can't pay a police officer in terms of like their contribution to ending crime or something really. You have to just give them a salary. Um, but uh, it's important for this kind of stuff because um, it's, it's, it's a way of uh, um, if, you're, if you're being paid according to productivity and things like that, then um, I don't know there's, there's this theory that uh, basically what's going to end up happening is that low wage workers would get paid less over time or something like that. Like they would. It would be a way, like, say, if you're working at Walmart now and you get like this thousand dollar a month check from the government, um, uh, the argument is that it would put pressure on Walmart to reduce their wages so that you could uh, basically subsidize Walmart by getting this UBI or something like that. So that's one of the concerns people have too is that um, it ends up kind of subsidizing low wages and kind of traps people into this kind of dependency, really, instead of actually. Um, getting them to be able to earn their whole income or something so yeah i see so you like if you want to push it to the extreme and you would have no wages being paid out by a company and it would just be paid out through ubi payments that's like the yeah. extreme case and I, I can kind of see how that ends up just being the government pays your wages instead of the uh the companies that are you know employing yeah you. and uh and one of the ways that that kind of ends up kind of uh um like I guess they call it like the moral hazards involved. So one of the problems with the that people kind of this is that, um, so I, I assume in his plan that there's no actual work requirements or something like that. Like there's no there's no 
requirement that you actually have to do any specific tasks. Um, yeah, I don't uh, think so. Yeah. So, I mean, it's that's just a policy choice. So, I mean, the government could all, all like, one, I mean, in some ways, they could almost always uh, end up being like, well, okay, you have UBI, but you have to check in with your worker once a week and go to volunteer and all that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, that's, that's not part of the policy as it is stated, but um, it kind of brings up like an important kind of point to me, at least, is that there's so many things wrong with the existing welfare system. Mm-hmm. I, know, I know that they kind of want to shift it over to, that's one of the reasons why they kind of promote this kind of thing is to kind of like change everything at once. Um, but the current system is already so filled with so much paperwork and kind of like terrible things you're going to have to deal with and kind of clawbacks and you know limits on what you get for this and that and uh especially in a lot of places in the u.s like there's pretty much like you know you have to you basically have even if you're on welfare you basically have to work anyways because you have to work for or like go for different kind of appointments and do all this other kind of stuff right um and uh um so i don't know i just have this kind of gut feeling about this kind of stuff where it's like well if people are okay with the system as it is now, why would they be better with UBI? Um, and uh, at least the marginal people, like the people, not the marginal, but like the kind of people in the middle who may, you know, if if d- democracy matters here, like then I'm not sure it does actually, but like if it does, if it's like say middle upper cl- income people who are deciding what the policies should be for welfare, um, I feel like there's a lot of things they could have already changed um, which uh, UBI is almost like a radical embrace of those changes and sometimes. Um, you know what I mean? Like, it, like it's not like people on welfare right now get a thousand a month of food stamps or something like that. You know what I mean? Like it's not, yeah. it's, there's so many ways that they could, you know, they could just raise food stamps, but instead, you know, they've been cutting back food stamps and limiting the number of people that can get them. And uh, that's a very, it seems like a very popular thing amongst uh, um Republicans, at least, this concept that there's too many people on food stamps and that they pay for too much different variety of things. Now, to, so to me, seeing UBI is like saying, well, why don't we have food stamps of a thousand a month and people can spend it on whatever they want? It's like, right. I don't know. I just don't know. Like if 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 this problem is to solve that people don't have enough money, then there's a lot of ways to solve that. And uh, so I, I just feel like it's a credibility thing, you know. And, and the reason why is that, uh, just to kind of go on a bit more about this, is that, yeah, like it's a, the reason why is because there's a lot of conservatives that believe that this is a way they can save money, right? They think that they can use the UBI to kind of leverage against other social programs and say, well, we don't need any sort of welfare uh, payments or anything like that because we have the UBI. But that's not actually true because a lot of what welfare caseworkers do and stuff uh, is like, oh, you don't have a bed we need to get you some money for a bed or something like that, you know, for like a young mother who's like an immigrant or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, a, it's stuff that we wouldn't think about directly, but a lot of their actual work as caseworkers is solving problems for people and helping them solve their problems that just don't have any money. And uh, yeah, so it's just, uh, um, I don't know. There's just stuff like that where it's kind of like, you know, we still need caseworkers. We still need charities. We still need all these kind of, institution so it's kind of like well um the quick fix is not gonna you know um solve that so yeah anyways yeah that the the thing about conservatives seeing ubi as a way to cut back social services i think there's a lot of people on the left who view ubi in the same light and i'm not sure if that's uh if that's like a fair assessment or not I, i really don't know like it seems like they may sort of just see conservatives seeing it that way, supporting it for those reasons, and then just assuming that it's some it's like that's the idea behind UBI. Yeah. But the thing with Yang that kind of is interesting to me is that he also um, is in favor of single payer health care. So yeah. that's an expansion of social services coupled with UBI. So yeah. um, I don't so, I don't know. That's interesting. So if you pull economists, like professional PhD like economists on uh, something like UBI, uh, the vast majority support it. Like the vast majority think it's a good idea in theory. But it's one of those things where um, there's some people, if you ask them, they probably say like a thousand a month is still pretty low. Like, you know what I mean? It's kind of 
it's 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 enough that uh, I mean, if you live in San Francisco on a uh, thousand a month, you're going to have a hard time. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of um, and it's uh, so it becomes one of those things where um, uh, if that were if that were the only it's it's kind of I mean, in the United States, the welfare uh, system is so destroyed since the 90s and before that, uh, you know, anything like that would be a huge improvement in some ways. But yeah. It's still, it's still like, we would still, I mean, the United States would still have a problem with poverty, and it's still have a problem with, um, and uh, you do see that kind of sometimes, that kind of, uh, you know, oh, we'll just solve poverty with this one measure, and uh, so that's been the big fear of, I guess, like, the labor movement in Canada is kind of being traditionally very critical of those, these kind of pro- programs, uh, because uh, they would much rather, you know, protect jobs and uh protect uh the welfare system as assuming like sort of like trying to create a social model where the assumption is the average person will have a good job that can pay their bills and then some people will need help and uh you know and then the difference for ubi there is this kind of bleeding over and we can talk a bit about this a bit more is that there's this idea that uh um it's almost like a supplement to the job that's not going to be there. You know what I mean? Like the job is not going to be as good as it was before, and you're not going to be able to hold down a kind of standard stuff. But really the labor market is something that we can kind of control in a lot of ways. And if we're not, if we're going to have this kind of casualized, um, no pension system, no, you know, all these kind of things, um, that's, that's a choice. Like that's, we can have that, but we could also have a highly kind of ordered, labor market with the uh, people the average person kind of having a role job where they kind of you know they're like a teacher or a nurse or something like that i think i don't know i so uh that's always been a worry for me too is that you know but i to me because you know i have the economics background i look at it and it's just money like it's just yeah all, all the basic income is is you know dollars so it's not like i don't know it it, it kind of it takes it takes the some of the energy out of it either way because it's kind of like it's not some big horrible thing that's going to change everything for the worse, but at the same time, it's just money. So worrying about what, what it's called and how it kind of is packaged is more a political problem than it is an actual economic economic kind of. Okay, well that that's yeah. sort of been my my like intuitive impression of of this thing as like a complete simpleton when it comes to economics and stuff. That's that's sort of my impression. It's like okay, well we can either have things packaged such a way that you this is free this is provided there's a subsidy here for you for food stamps and that kind of thing or yeah. you, um or it can be provided in a more like liquid cash kind of way and then you make those decisions for yourself yeah uh, and either way it it what really matters isn't the form it's just that you have enough to handle your needs yeah and i think it's also some of this idea of just what you know, how do the, at least if like the politicians are the ones kind of controlling this kind of stuff, then how do they view the economy as a whole and what are its purposes and stuff? Because mm. if it's just a matter of like uh, little reforms here and there, but um, if, if there is like a political will to like say, no, everyone should have housing, everyone should have, you know, these kind of like baseline things and almost like a political embarrassment if they don't have those things, mm-hmm. then, uh, um, the actual form it takes matters a lot less at that point because it's sure. you know what I mean like if it's yeah. kind of like if you know if like a social worker knows they have to get a person a certain set of things then uh how that is done uh, matters less I, but the thing is so yeah I don't know I I, I kind of I do I understand the concerns of like making it like a uh there are a lot of people especially in Canada like with the Green Party the Green Party is a lot bigger here than it is in the United States um it's still small but it's still like it is an influential thing, and they're one of their big platforms is always like uh, basic income, and uh, so they push this very hard, and it really has been a conservative force within the part of like the Green Party um, to try to it's it's like a progressive measure, but it kind of strips away a lot of their thinking about the rest of the economy. I mean, they do think in terms of like say macroeconomic, like you know we got to change the ecology and stuff like that, but they don't think as much about um traditional kind of social policy kind of stuff because they kind of think well we got to solve it this way and stuff it's kind of it ends up being too kind of wonky because i don't know i always worry when any kind of program is 
designed by, by economists to solve problems in other fields kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, yeah. like, uh, you know, there, there are social workers and they kind of know what needs to be done in some ways. And, um, so, uh, yeah, cause sometimes the anger becomes so much about the fact that there are bureaucrats there and not the fact that like, cause that's one of the big things in Canada is the conservatives as well. Like, any conservative that supports it kind of like focuses on the fact it's going to um, like obliterate part of the social welfare bureaucracy and stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it's interesting. I, I think it would be fine if we had it. I don't think the idea uh, with, at least from coming from Yang is that this just uh, replaces social services. Like I said, he wants to have single payer health care. Yeah. Um, but he's also, he, he used to be a venture capitalist, I think. Um, so he definitely has this idea of like promoting entrepreneurialism and kind of like just capitalist um, ideals in general. But I mean, he doesn't seem like a bad guy. He wants to decriminalize marijuana federally and release everyone from prisons who's in, in, in prisons for those things yeah um, I, he wants to um like downsize military bases abroad and create like a legion of builders or something like that with so military personnel would be put to work rebuilding infrastructure and stuff so he has like ideas that do seem morally grounded in a certain idea of like what a social good is that we should have yeah. And have practical ideas about how to get there. And I think the UBI thing, people tend to read maybe too much into it sometimes. Like they yeah. see it as carrying all this ideological baggage where maybe it's just something that you can get like working. It's a positive thing for working people just because it's more, it's a plus in the, you know, in the government or the state giving back to you. Yeah. Um, and it's also something that, some demon like Zuckerberg or Elon Musk can actually be happy with as well. So yeah, that's, I kind of see like that as like a decent way of going about things. Uh, we could compare that to more of like an old school, like Bernie Sanders kind of approach to things. If, if we want to, um, I think a big difference between someone like Yang and someone like Bernie Sanders is, um, Or anyone kind of just promoting, like, sort of New Deal style, like, you know, worker job programs, all that kind of stuff, is an idea about what the economy should be doing in the future, like what we should be building to. I think um, Yang seems to be trying to embrace automation and AI and all that kind of stuff. And I don't know if that's something we should be concerned about or, or what. Um, but then on the Bernie Sanders style thing, like I, that seems fine, but it also doesn't seem to be like a real vision for w- what we're going to be doing like at work. Like, I think he just sort of seems to have this idea that we'll just keep doing what we have been doing. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I kind of do buy into the idea that things are changing pretty dramatically and that, uh, we, we can't just kind of be like like this the the u.s economy is like how much of it is services like 60 percent or something like that um i I just don't think that's really sustainable at this point um so yeah i don't know like uh i'm not sure how to phrase it um yeah this this idea that uh automation and ai and all these things it's hard to know exactly to me like what uh that means kind of thing in a lot of ways especially because at like a global level um I don't know. Like, I don't know exactly what jobs exactly are going to be replaced and how they're going to. To me, uh, job levels are set more by overall uh, macroeconomic policy. Like, that's just kind of mainstream kind of economic thing. And uh, you can't really. It's unlikely that you would have a situation where the economy is kind of well ordered and well functioning and stuff. And you would have mass unemployment at the same time. Like, it just doesn't. Um, that's usually like a, a, um, a symptom of something else. It's not really a symptom of automation. Um, uh, it's more a symptom of something, pro- some other problem with the labor market. Like, um, like in Europe, there's parts of the, the, I mean, it's more because certain parts of Europe are depressed economically and then other parts are 
expanding rapidly. So the overall uh, economic structure can't really adjust to how it should in theory. So, uh, you know, anyway, the point being is that um, even if there were like, say, a huge shift in automation in the United States, there would be a change in the labor market that corresponded to it. Um, now, it might be terrible. It might be like kind of like a rust belt kind of thing. Um, but that right. was also like, you know, like it could be that's true. But uh, it's also um, it's hard to like, I mean, just in, in kind of like the way that I still think about economics and stuff is that, um, yeah, like it, it's like there's still there's still as many jobs as there was in the United States as it was 30 years ago. Um, it's just that they've shifted, as you said, to because uh, making certain things in certain ways, like, you know, making cars or something like that has become a lot easier in a lot of ways and a lot safer than it was before. Um, do you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of, it's like, it, it's, I don't know, like people thought that when farms technology was changing, um, that, uh, everyone would be unemployed because farms would produce so much that, um, people wouldn't have to actually work on them. So there'd be nothing for them to do kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it seems to me very clearly that there'd be just a giant shift in how things happen. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it necessarily has to be, um, mass unemployment with nothing for people to do kind of thing or something like that, you know, so. Mm. 